Hello again, friends, and welcome into Gamecock Central Radio. Emerson Phillips with Wes Mitchell here to talk a little bit of Gamecock football recruiting. Wes, how are you getting along today? Good, man, hanging in there. I was just talking off the air here. It sounds like, or it seems like, there, there's always somebody on campus of this staff, man, really busting their tails. And, uh, the good thing is that, that always gives us something to talk about, Emerson. Yeah, it does. Yeah, three more visits this weekend. We're going to talk about these three young men that are part of the 2017 class. Uh, before we get to that, Wes, wanted to talk about the departure of three players from the Gamecock football program. This has all happened here in the last 12 days or so. First, Shaq Davidson, a wide receiver from Gaffney, uh, you know, battled some injuries during his time at South Carolina. He will leave the program, and this weekend we found out that Al Harris – and David Johnson, a couple of defensive players who played a good bit this past year, will be leaving the program as well. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, you know, I think um, all those different guys are, are leaving for uh, various reasons, and uh, you know, a lot of times those reasons don't don't really come to light. But uh, you know, I think a situation, if you look at it in, in general, not each individual situation, that there's almost always going to be transfers in the off season. There's going to be guys, you know, who uh, are sort of no longer with the program uh, for various reasons. And uh, I think that's common anyway at every single program, but especially when you have a coaching change, you're going to have guys that aren't used to the way things are being done with the new staff. You're going to have guys who <clears throat> maybe don't like the way things are, are being done with the current staff and, and guys that just feel there's a need to, to move along. You know, some in some situations that's the player's choice. In some situations, you know, it's not uh, because of, of off the field issues. So uh, I think uh, this is sort of just the beginning of that. I think as we get into spring, you know, you don't really want to speculate on names or, or even name names, but certainly it's very, very common for the be, to be guys that leave. And, uh, you know, I, I think we'll probably continue to see that. And then, then after spring, you know, you almost always have some guys who maybe didn't. Uh, get to play as much in the spring as maybe they hoped, and they decide to move along. So pretty common in major college football. All right, Wes, before we get into these three visits from football recruits that the Gamecocks had this past weekend, I wanted to ask you about Brandon McIlwain as well. Of course, the Gamecock baseball team lifted the lid on the 2016 season this past weekend, and a lot of Gamecock fans are curious to know what kind of role Brandon McIlwain will have with the baseball team and how that might affect uh, his approach or his availability for the football team with spring practice coming up in a couple of weeks. I know McElwain got a, an at-bat in each of the first three baseball games this weekend, a pinch hit appearance in each of the three games. He was 0 for 3 at the plate with one strikeout, but you know he had a, a big preseason practice with the Gamecocks. We talked about the fact he had a couple home runs in the first uh, weekend of scrimmages a couple of weeks back. So w- what does it look like for McElwain with baseball? Uh, it seems like we're, you know, obviously the kid is still very green. He's just getting his feet wet with college athletics, but he was, you know, projected as high as a first round pick in the upcoming Major League Baseball draft. He turned that down for an opportunity to enroll at South Carolina and play two sports for the Gamecocks. So talk about McIlwain and what the immediate future looks like for him. Yeah, you know, I think with McIlwain, important to remember a couple of different things. One, this is a kid that should, you know, be in high school still. He graduated early. He would be basically beating up on high school pitchers at this point if, um, you know, if he had stayed in, in high school. So that that's never an easy transition for any freshman, I don't think. Uh, but you're talking about a kid who didn't have that entire, you know, most of these guys come in in the fall or in the summer and have an entire fall practice behind them. So even if they're a freshman, they've gotten that out of the way. Uh, so, you know, important to remember that's never easy. Two, he is a, he is going to be football first. Uh, he's going to be a football scholarship guy. Now, that really is by no choice of his or the staff or anybody. Any, anybody that comes in and plays both sports, has to be on a football scholarship. That's an NCAA rule. So, um, you know, that's not really by anybody's choice, but it, it's the fact of the matter is he's a football guy. So, you know, from everything that has been said, if there's a football practice going on, McElwain is going to be at South Carolina's football practice. So I, I think that probably affects him, you know, for a handful of games. Maybe uh, I think I saw, to give full credit, I think I saw in the state maybe there are nine nine days where there's a football game and a baseball or a football practice and a baseball game and 
you, you know, you, you look at how that'll work. I, I guess it's it's possible there will be some days he could be on the football practice field and then be in the baseball dugout on, on the same day. So, uh, you know, that that's something to look at. He also has that 20-hour student-athlete rule to, to keep in mind where the NCAA limits how many hours that a student-athlete can be uh, participating for a sport. Uh, so that's something to keep an eye on. But, you know, this is going to be a thing where for the spring practice it's going to make for a bit, very busy schedule for McElwain. But I think once spring practice is over and, um, you know, that baseball schedule sort of gets into the meat of, of it, if, you know, if he's contributing to the baseball team, I really don't think the fact he's a quarterback is going to have much of a effect on the baseball schedule because, you know, by that kind of latter half of the season, um, the football stuff will be out of the way. Gamecock Central Radio, Emerson Phillips with Wes Mitchell. We invite you to download the free phone apps that allow you to listen to Gamecock Central Radio on your phone. You can listen in your car. You can listen on the go. Listen on your phone anytime you like. Free phone apps. We have an Android app and an iPhone app. And we're also on iTunes. Simply search Gamecock Central Radio for all three. Wes, we'll keep an eye on the McElwain situation as baseball season rolls on. Wanted to get back to football recruiting for a moment. Three players on campus this past weekend. One of those 2017 recruit, Trey Lawson, a 6'6", 248-pound defensive end out of North Augusta High School here in South Carolina. Tell us about his visit. Uh, Yeah, Trey actually was on campus two weekends in a row. He was at the junior day. You know, two Saturdays ago, and, and took that in, and he came back to get to sit down a little bit more and spend some quality time with Will Muschamp. And it, it's a kid that's really seen his recruitment skyrocket the last, I don't know, maybe two months or so. He didn't have a single offer, I, I don't think, uh, if you go back to two or three months ago, and now he's got offers from schools like Florida State, South Carolina, Tennessee, Ole Miss, Kentucky, Georgia. They have all jumped in, so it's kind of blown up on him. Uh, he's from North Augusta, South Carolina. That's really only, uh, his house is only about 45 minutes away from Columbia. So, uh, you know, easy trip for him and his, his dad who's very involved with his recruiting process. And I, I think South Carolina sort of helped themselves and, and put themselves in a pretty good position early on. You know, he, he wants to continue to take visits. He's going to go to Florida State. He's going to go to Clemson here soon. Uh, wants to maybe get to Georgia Tech in March as well. But, uh, you know, a long way to go with this kid. He's not claiming any favorites, but as far as an in-state guy who's a priority, uh, the whole coaching staff has made him feel wanted. I, I really just uh, kind of my, my vibe, my read on the situation is that South Carolina has, has helped themselves a great deal. Uh, I think any any time a kid takes the time to go to campus two weekends in a row, uh, it says something about their interest in the program and, I think it's I think it's at least very safe to say South Carolina has Trey Lawson's uh, attention at this point. All right, Darion Kendrick from South Point and running back Javon Leak out of North Carolina visiting this weekend as well. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll start with DK, Darion Kendrick. This is the name if you're a recruiting fan out there. You're going to want to know if you're a high school football fan, you're going to want to go see this kid play. You know, I, I think uh, Darion is, is up there with anybody in that 2018 class in state. Uh, an absolute stud. Uh, some people in, at that South Point program are comparing him to Stephon Gilmore at the same stage. He's an all-around athlete, could play defensive back at the next level, could play wide receiver, wildcat quarterback type role. You know, South Point, I think, is going to use him all over the place. But, you know, the schools early on, I think, are Florida, Clemson, and South Carolina. This is the kid that was really, really close with Nick McLeod. And I, I think, uh, you know, Nick McLeod, of course, the defensive back at South Point that South Carolina ultimately did not offer. Uh, you know, I think South Carolina, if they had offered and landed McLeod, probably put themselves in, in a pretty good situation to, to be in the driver's seat with uh, Kendrick. But they, of course, didn't. He went to NC State, and, um, you know, that's a situation that will be worth monitoring, I, I think, with, uh, with DK. And a long, long way to go, but I think when you consider – the McLeod situation that South Carolina did not offer. It's going to be very important, and it was probably a big deal to go ahead and get him on campus this past weekend. It's going to be a very big deal to try to continue to get him back on campus and keep them interested in the South Carolina program. You can get breaking Gamecock news alerts delivered to your email inbox. Just text USC to 42828. 
Text USC to 42828. Emerson Phillips and Wes Mitchell here on Gamecock Central Radio. Wes, uh, Javon Leak, running back out of North Carolina in town this weekend right. as well. So the Gamecocks, full speed ahead for 2017 with recruiting. Uh, yeah, this kid is a high three-star guy. Um, we got him ranked, uh, the Rivals has him ranked, I should say, as the number 11 player in the state of North Carolina. He's from Page High School, which is in Greensboro, 6'1", 192-pounder. And, uh, you know, a kid that uh, I think, uh, you know, has some legitimate interest in South Carolina. He's got a top three right now that includes North Carolina, Tennessee, and, of course, the Gamecocks. And I think this is a position of need for South Carolina. I know the visit went very, very well. I'd expect them actually to try to roll as many running backs, top running backs, I should say, through the program as possible this spring and try to get them uh, on campus and and get them, you know, familiar with the South Carolina program because I, I think if you look at needs for this class, uh, South Carolina really needs to have a, a massive pull at defensive back and they have, need to have a really quality pull at, at running back as well. So Javon League, one of the top running backs out there, again, a high three-star kid and you know, I think South Carolina has some staying power with him. So I think a guy to keep an eye on, a guy to watch moving forward. That position in particular, you know, even at this early stage, Emerson, you know, we're recording this here on, on February 22nd. Even at this early stage, there's already some positions that it seems that uh, you already kind of actually have a feel for, for what direction those positions are headed with this recruiting class. Um Running back is not one of those positions. You know, I think there's a number of guys out there South Carolina is sort of chasing and wants to be involved with. And uh, I do think Javon Leak is a guy that South Carolina fans should, should probably pay attention to. Yeah, we're still very early in the recruiting process for the 2017 class, you know, almost a year away from signing day 2017. But it's all about developing relationships with your prospects. And the Gamecock staff appears to be doing a very good job of doing that. So you build these relationships you try to endear yourself to these kids and show off your campus, show off your, your academic programs, your facilities, everything that you have to offer, and you hope that when the time comes, they side with you and sign on that dotted line to play Gamecock football. So it's interesting to follow the process and how it works and three more important prospects on campus this past weekend. So the staff continues to work hard, and it's kind of a wait-and-see approach up until next year's signing day. Yeah, absolutely. they they got to bust their tails, and they're still – you know, trying to play catch up because it starts so early. Um, it, it really does. You know, you look. Uh, I mean, Darion Kendrick's a perfect example. He's a class of 2018 kid. School started offering him this summer, so uh, you know that that tells you something right there. And uh, you know, some of these guys from 2017 are guys that this staff, if they were already in place, probably would have offered a year ago. But uh, so they'll they'll play catch up on some guys. They'll do their best, but you know, having a full cycle to go out and recruit and build relationships. Um, you know, I, I'm personally, as someone who covers it, I'm very interested to see just what this staff can do with that full cycle to go out and recruit. All right, Muschamp and staff uh, working full speed around the clock with Gamecock recruiting, trying to get things ready to go for a 2017 signing class. And all this with spring practice getting out of way in just a couple of weeks. Gamecock football spring practice will start on Tuesday, March 15th. We have scrimmages scheduled for Saturday, March 26th and April 2nd. And then the Garnet and Black Spring Game will take place on Saturday, April the 9th. Wes, we appreciate your time. Keep up the great work. Thank you, brother. All right, man. Sounds good. He's Wes Mitchell. I'm Emerson Phillips, and this is Gamecock Central Radio. Thanks for joining us, and have a great week.